Hello friends. So today we are back with another topic, and today's topic is iron deficiency. So you may be aware that iron deficiency is a common cause of anemia, which is a lower amount of hemoglobin. And uh, so what is the normal hemoglobin levels? So the normal levels are 14 to 18 in males, and about two grams lower. So two, 12 to 16 in women. So that's that's the normal level. So if somebody has iron deficiency, it leads to anemia, that is lower hemoglobin, and there are other causes also of anemia. In that we know that vitamin B12 deficiency is another common cause, which we already covered earlier. So today we are focus on the iron deficiency anemia. So when somebody has iron deficiency anemia, so basically hemoglobin is required for oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. So that gets reduced when somebody has lower amount of hemoglobin. So the symptoms can be fatigue. tiredness weakness when they start walking or climbing stairs they feel out of breath the skin and the nail beds they may appear pale and also the nails become brittle and sometimes spoon shaped what is called as colonakia the tongue can become red that is called glossitis and then can be small ulcers at the angle of mouth called as angular stomatitis and such people they can also have abnormal craving for things like dirt or even ice so that is another thing which can be seen and generally they look little sick and weak and they don't have a good appetite also so any of these symptoms either alone or in combination can be seen in people with iron deficiency anemia so when you suspect iron deficiency anemia so are there certain groups of people who are more prone to it so definitely there are some groups like women generally because of various factors they have menstruation menstruation or periods during which some amount of blood is lost every month and then uh, generally their diet also may be poor in iron rich food especially in india then during pregnancy and lactation a some amount of extra iron is needed so that can increase the risk of anemia in them then next group will be people with you know gut disorders because iron absorption occurs in the small intestine so if anyone has a disorder of gut like inflammatory bowel disease ulcerative colitis crohn's or any chronic disease again that can lead to loss of hemoglobin or drop in hemoglobin that can cause iron deficiency anemia and uh, somebody who has undergone bariatric surgery or any surgery on the small intestine or the gut they can have a higher risk those with peptic ulcer or just gastritis can lose blood or blood loss from any other reason like after an accident or any major surgery can increase the risk of iron deficiency and that can cause anemia so these are the various uh, causes and various groups which are prone to get iron deficiency and anemia so how do we confirm the diagnosis so number one is hemoglobin which can be routinely tested and anyone who has a lower hemoglobin so less than 14 in men and less than 12 in women we should check for serum iron so that will be low in iron deficiency anemia and then other things in the blood picture what is called as hematocrit will be lower uh, mcv mean corpuscular volume will be lower and in the blood picture it is called as hypochromic anemia which is you know very typical of or microcytic the smaller rbcs red blood cells so they can be seen in the blood picture and then the iron is stored in the body in the liver in the form of ferritin so serum ferritin also may be reduced and then the iron binding capacity in the total iron binding capacity may get increased so these are all additional tests that can be done but the first basic test is the amount of hemoglobin is less and the serum iron level also is reduced so with that we have a clue so now that you know once we have uh, diagnosed then uh, you know first we'll discuss prevention so prevention is always better than cure so how do we ensure that one gets adequate amount of iron so by taking iron rich foods and uh, iron rich foods are mainly found in the non vegetarian sources like say meat or poultry or fish so they are the best sources they have they are the best sources because they have good amount of iron and also the iron in them they get better absorbed in our gut also whereas there are some certain uh, vegetarian foods also like say green leafy vegetables of the cabbage family uh, like say broccoli cauliflower and cabbage itself and also legumes like peas and beans so they also have good amount of iron but the absorption may be lesser as compared to the non vegetarian foods that we discussed and many nowadays we are getting many foods that are fortified with iron which can be also taken and uh, one thing to note here is that some children who take large amounts of uh, cow milk per day that can also lead to lower amounts of iron because absorption may be reduced in some you know some of them 
so these are the foods which can be taken to you know improve the iron levels and uh, prevent anemia and if somebody is already iron deficient say hemoglobin is less and they are having symptoms it is better to start them on treatment and obviously the treatment of iron deficiency will be by giving iron so iron can be given in two forms usually it is in tablet form or it can be in injection form so those who have mild anemia or milder symptoms they can be given iron and iron comes in various forms like fumarate and other sulfate so basically we are looking at the elemental iron so elemental iron for the treatment purpose we need about 150 to 200 mg of elemental iron per day which comes to about 2 to 5 mg per kg body weight so when you are taking the tablet at the back look at how much iron is contained in them so it is say between 150 to 200 mg that should be fine uh, for consumption usually one tablet is required and uh, and one thing to note is that people who are also taking antacids for their acidity problem they should time the iron tablet in such a way that it be should be either 2 hours before antacids or 4 hours after taking antacids because uh, otherwise if you take them together iron may not get absorbed so that's what is important to note and then other some doctors also advise uh, taking vitamin C because vitamin C is another thing which can help in good absorption of iron so these are some of the tips when you take iron tab tablets and always remember that iron tablet can make your feces or the stool black in color so not to get worried about that and uh, so that's the important and then in some people it can cause little metallic taste or uh, you know constipation issues but those symptoms are not very common if somebody has got severe iron deficiency or severe symptoms we want to build up the iron levels very fast and for this injections of iron are also there that is called IV iron it can be given in the dextran form so usually your physician or hematologist will guide you which form is required for you so I think you know today you have learned what is iron deficiency what can be the symptoms of iron deficiency anemia how do we diagnose what foods are rich in the iron sources and then what conditions can predispose somebody to develop iron deficiency anemia and then my tips of treating by tablets or iron so if you liked it please like post your comments or queries share this video and subscribe to my channel for more informative videos in the future. Thank you.